we gather here today to hear God's word and to remember and to give thanks for the life of Janet Izzard. We do so as a community of faith gathered together, friends and family, those who hold Janet in their hearts this day and lift her up to the love of God. And so let us join together in our call to worship as found in your bulletin. We come to worship God who has made us and knows us. We come to follow Jesus who leads us to new life. We come to listen for the Holy Spirit who calls us forth. Let us worship God. Let us pray. When we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. And we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we too might live a new life. For indeed, if we have been united with Christ in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. And so we acknowledge, O God, the uncertainty of our life on earth. You have reminded us in your word that all flesh is as grass and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. And so do not be silent at our tears, O God, for we live as strangers before you, but you are the same. And so speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death and help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are ended, Enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying, our life may be in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. And so we praise you this day, O God, for those dear to us, whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially we thank you for your servant, Janet, whom you have now received into your presence, and so help us to believe, O oh God, where we have not seen, to trust you to lead us throughout all of our years until you bring us at last with all your saints into the joy of your home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Love is but a song we sing Fears the way we die You can make the mountain ring Or make the angels cry Though the birds Come on, people now, smile on your brother, everybody get together, try to love one another right now. Some may come and some may go, we shall surely pass. When the one who left us here returns for us at last, we are but a moment sunlight fading in the grass. Come on, people now. Smile on your brother, everybody get 
Africa Try to love one another right now If you hear the song I sing You will understand You hold the key to love and fear All in your trembling hands Just one key unlocks them both It's there at your command Come on people now Smile on your sister, everybody get together Try to love one another right now Here these words of scripture taken first from the Old Testament, a reading from the book of Psalms, reading the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And from the New Testament, a reading from Paul's letter to the church at Rome, reading in the eighth chapter, this beautiful image that Paul has of Christ's grace and mercy that is offered to us. If God is on our side, who is against us? He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How can he fail to lavish every other gift upon us? Who will bring a charge against those whom God has chosen? Not God. God acquits. Who will pronounce judgment? Not Christ who died, who rose again. Not Christ who is at God's right hand, who pleads our cause. Then what can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ? Can affliction or hardship, can persecution, hunger, nakedness, danger, or sword? We are being done to death for your sake all the day long, as Scripture says, and yet throughout it all, overwhelming victory is ours through him who loved us. For I am convinced that there is nothing in death or life, in the realm of spirits or supernatural powers, in the world as it is or the world as it shall be, in the forces of the universe, in the heights or depths, nothing in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. May God add understanding to these readings from God's holy word. For this indeed is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
watch them bloom for me and for you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. know if anybody else needed their Kleenex, but I do in a little bit. Thank you, Otis. My name is Penny Shelton. I'm married to Bob Stewart, the recently retired director of the school, Scripps School of Journalism, who was hired by Ralph in 1987. So Janet and I had something in common as we knew what it meant to be the first lady of the Scripps School of Journalism. When I arrived in Athens, I married into Ralph and Janet's circle of friends. That was 17 years ago. I had no idea the treat that being their friend was gonna be for me. With deep gratitude, I acknowledge the gift of knowing and getting to enjoy Janet. I miss her. I know she gave each of us our share of Janet stories and experiences. Here are a few of mine, for which I am grateful and by which I am inspired and comforted. Janet was a supremely gifted hostess. Because of Ralph's job, I know she welcomed the chance to cook for guests, including visiting celebrity reporters such as Pete Arnett. Did I say it right? Okay. <laughs> My own favorite memory from a meal at Janet and Ralph's home was not being able to get enough of this amazingly scrumptious corn on the cob that she was serving. I finally asked her about it and she said, you can't go wrong with Witten's. <laughs> Witten's roadside stand then became my go-to for corn on the cob each and every summer. Thank you, Janet. 
Having been a teacher of apparel design, it was a joy to have her attend the Papa clothing home parties my daughter-in-law would bring to Athens twice a year for the last few years. I appreciated her support of my daughter-in-law's business. And it was more fun when she attended. She and I both purchased this scarf, which I'm wearing. Uh, I knew I was choosing wisely if Janet liked it. A few weeks before she died, Janet and Ralph showed up in Casa Cantina to hear the Bob Stewart Band with special guest Zeke Hutchison. At one point, I saw from across the room that Janet had gone up to a table of eight to 10 college age males and was leaning in, smiling and talking with them. It seemed unlikely that she really knew any of them, but she seemed to be having a great conversation. Ralph shared recently that one time they were walking in New York and he noticed uh, that she was no longer with their group and turned around to see her chatting with some complete strangers. He said she could talk to anyone, anytime. No one was a stranger to Janet. I find this inspiring in a day and time when treating everyone as interesting and as cherished neighbors might be a very helpful and good thing, as long as we wear masks and practice social distancing. I do believe her fave band was in Baton Rouge, though. Sorry, Bob Stewart Band. Um, I hear she would watch for announcements of their performances, attend enthusiastically, and get to know all the band's family and other groupies. When Janet said yes and married Ralph, she got a super wonderful bonus in addition to getting to love on him for the rest of her life. She got to travel with his job, which fulfilled a dream she had to see the world. When they got the chance, they lived in Hawaii for a while and in New York City for a few years, taking in all they could of the culture and fun of those locations. I find this zeal to seize opportunities to live in awesome locations inspiring. Her laugh was amazing. I loved how she laughed out loud as she appreciated the humor to be found in many situations. She was so fun to be around because of her lighthearted approach to life. Love of family was key for Janet. She was always figuring out how to best approach the challenges Ralph faced in recent times. and was a very thoughtful and effective advocate for him. She helped create a beautiful home in a beautiful wooded setting with gorgeous art pieces from their various travels, placed appropriately, much better than I could ever figure out how to do. Certainly, she and Ralph have given the world a huge gift by having Martha, who blesses her students friends and family with her talent, hard work, smile and love. Carpe diem was a phrase Janet seemed to take to heart. She thoroughly in advance researched, capital R, the places she traveled to, including when Ralph had meetings to attend due to his work. If Bob was attending the same meeting, she would invite me to join in on her itinerary. However, if I slept in too long, I would miss out on joining her because she jumped right in each morning. She saw the museums and art galleries as preferred destinations, but also could be talked into botanical garden tours. She was not super active on Facebook usually, but I noticed that she posted lots about Joe Burrow this past season, even though she was not usually a football fan. Ralph said she even watched the final game all the way through. I also noticed that she had posted about a birding event in West Virginia that was to happen this spring, and I believe she had hoped to attend. Since her passing, I've noticed birds more and continue to marvel at the variety of beautiful birds that congregate off of their back deck. I wonder if she kept a list of birds she had seen. On Wednesday of the week that Janet died, we got the news of her severe headache and she and the transfer to Riverside with the shocking and devastating news about the scan results. I remember calling Ralph on my way to work on that Friday morning, promising him that I would carpe diem in her honor, but he was to let us know if he wanted us to come up to visit. He suggested Saturday morning. So Friday evening after work, I was driving uptown to meet Bob for dinner 
We were dri I was driving on Court Street looking for parking, and I saw what appeared to be a sheet of gold over Court Street that would disappear and form again. I was amazed by the beauty, but puzzled as to what it could be. As I got closer, I saw that it was a flock of birds flying in formation with their wings catching the golden sunset light just right in certain positions so that they appeared to be a sheet of gold. After safely parking, I turned and looked at this particularly brilliant sunset and realized the breathtaking beauty of the moment. Janet was, of course, on my mind, and I wished she was standing there looking at it with me. Janet's gifts to all of us remain today and always a part of us. In her honor going forward, I will attempt, and maybe you might choose to join me in doing more of the items on the following list. Carpe diem. Treat everyone as your valued neighbor and potential BFF, for that matter. Safely with masks and social distancing, meet someone you don't know and find out a little known fact about them, even if your family has to stop and wait for you. Enjoy nature and especially the birds. Enjoy your favorite music or band. Enjoy beautiful art. Celebrate Joe Burrow. Love on our families. And certainly, eat more Witten's corn on the cob. Tribute to Janet Fizer. This year of 2020 feels so unusual and so sad. It began with Janet's leaving us. Physically, of course, though Janet is not here with us in person today, she's present in our loving memories and the lives she has touched with her open mind, empathy, and attention. I met Janet first time in the summer of 2011, right before I left Baton Rouge, Louisiana for my first tenure track job at Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. Dr. Ralph Fizer was my professor at LSU and my mentor since my PhD program at LSU. And he introduced me to Janet during our last lunch in Baton Rouge. That time I was happy to know that I won't be that far away from Ralph and Janet and my favorite place, Athens, Ohio, where I spent two years of my life for completing my MA program. Favorite people of my life and my favorite place. Janet has always been a voice for social justice, inclusion, and diversity. She occasionally used to share some relevant reports and articles with us at Media Diversity Forum, through Ralph, of course. And Ralph would email me and tell me that our Athens correspondent shared uh, this article with us. Janet was always such a loving and caring figure for me. Since I met Janet in 2011, I found her full of positive energy and unconditional support. Since then, her presence in my life and later in my family's life, we would see each other almost every year at AEJMC conferences or in Athens, and her love even spread to touch the lives of my wife and son. We felt her support, and it brought joy to our life, and especially our precious little son, Amit. She introduced Amit to LSU through the LSU football that Janet sent to Amit, the toys that Janet shared with Amit, and the humorous Louisiana country song, Go Boro Go, that brought joy and lots of smile to my son. We were so thrilled to celebrate LSU football's winning of BCS championship led by Athens' very own Joe Boro, one of the good things that happened in 2020. Janet also saw Joe win the Heisman Trophy, 
Janet was rooting for Joe Burrow all season long. I enjoyed our numerous text messages and emails about Joe Burrow and LSU football throughout the season. We really had some great times during our last visit to Athens in October last year. Janet made delicious chicken chili for us. She even made sure that we had breakfast, snacks, drinks, and baby toys at the Airbnb place we stayed during our trip to make us feel comfortable. Our last time together was at the Little Fish Brewing Company. Janet was very Janet, lively, interactive, and connecting with their friends, neighbors at Little Fish. Janet held my son, Amit, there. It was a really fun time for all of us. It was an awesome gathering on a lovely fall evening in Athens that we'll never forget. I know I won't hear that voice, that tone of Janet saying, hi, Mas, a voice full of affection and comfort. I still and will continue to hear the echo of her voice in me. Janet, we love you. you ch we cherish you in our heart. We are so lucky that we got to know a very wonderful, kind-hearted and enlightened person like you. Your moments with us are very present in our life. Whenever we see that LSU football in our house, we see you. When we see the puzzle in our house, we see you. When we talk about LSU football and Joe Borrow, we see you. When you talk about, when we talk about museums, galleries and farmers markets, organic food, we see you. There are more other ways we see you. You touch our lives in so many ways. Yet, we miss you. Peace be with you. My name is Dan Collins, and this is my wife, Marion Pyle. We're both extremely sad we're not able to make it to Athens today in person. And we do thank the Reverend Martin for allowing us to say a few brief words. I'm a lifelong native and resident of Baton Rouge, as you folks probably know, the home of Louisiana State University and Joe Burrow for a few glorious years. Baton Rouge was a second home for Janet and Ralph. Ralph taught journalism at LSU at the Manship School of Mass Communication starting in 2001 and became the interim dean of school of journalism in 2010 and 2011. Ralph was inducted into the LSU Hall of Fame in uh, 2014. I tell you about Dr. Ralph uh, Izzard because of the 56 years of marriage. They were a team that traveled the world together. As travelers, Janet had the ability to fit in you could count on Janet to be in conversation with someone in a crowd of total strangers. She never met a stranger. Janet was just one of those people that had the ability to make friends. Marion and I were very fortunate to be the recipients in that regard and called Janet a true friend. We first met Janet and Ralph as our backdoor neighbors. Good fortune of having great neighbors and then we discovered that we went to the same church. We quickly discovered they both loved Louisiana and wanted to see as much as possible. Her obituary called her a tour guide and literally as a native, I learned about Louisiana from her. She was always doing something, birding, cooking. In fact, Marion taught her how to cook a gumbo and we both taught she and Ralph how to eat crawfish. Uh, we also taught her how to dance to Cajun and Zydeco music. She even had her favorite Cajun band, the Grammy Award winning Lost Bayou Ramblers. And Mardi Gras, we introduced them both to the real Mardi Gras in Southwest Louisiana, where the revelers traveled by horseback, going from farm to farm in search for a chicken or a rooster for a gumbo. She loved everything about Fat Tuesday. Oh, and I almost forgot, we introduced both Janet and Ralph to hurricanes. 
We often discussed how they should move to Baton Rouge once they retired. No more snow shoveling. But she loved Af Athens, even after traveling the world. She always had a special place in her heart for Athens. When our son went off to school to Brattleboro, Vermont, we stopped by for what we thought was going to be one evening in Athens. However, we ended up staying two nights. Janet managed to squeeze so much of Athens in, that, in those two nights, two, two, two days. She even brought us to an international quilting show. So we knew about Athens well before we knew about Joe Burrow. There's a funny story about the trip. We ended up driving our son to graduate school in Vermont, and there was a hurricane tracking the East Coast, uh, Hurricane Irene. Uh, we went to our hotel and parked on Flat Street. We should have known uh, with parking on Flat Street, the backwaters of the Connecticut River ended up flooding uh, our son's car. Uh, throughout our entire history of living in Louisiana, we've never lost a car to a hurricane, but we did in Vermont. And Janet just felt that story was so amusing. She was a fascinating woman. She was likable, she was smart, she was caring, and truly a pleasure to know. She was fun, and she had just had a great attitude. Because of Joe Burrow and LSU, the world now may now know all about Athens, Ohio. But when Marion and I hear the name Athens, we're proud to say we know Athens, Ohio, because of this wonderful person we all know, Janet Felipe Izzard. We love you, Janet. A testament to how much I love Janet is my getting up to do this talk. Unlike Janet, I am very shy, but my heart feels how important it is to share my love for this dear friend. Her love of life and people was infectious, and it was such a pleasure to watch her interact with friends and strangers. Dan has already told you about Ralph and Janet throwing them into our crazy Louisiana culture. I'd like to tell you about the very last time we were all together. Dan and I were near the end of a two-month stay at the American Cancer Society's Hope Lodge in New York City for a treatment Dan was undergoing at Memorial Sloan Kettering. Janet and Ralph gave up being with family and friends in Athens to spend Thanksgiving with us. How fun to romp around their old stomping grounds together. We walked around Central Park. We marveled like kids at Christmas decorations. We ate at fun restaurants. Thanksgiving Day itself, we attempted to watch the Macy's Day Parade up close. And we walked and walked in the cold. But not even Janet could talk her way through the police line. We finally gave up and went back to their hotel room just in time to see the Ohio State Marching Band on television in their nice, cozy, warm hotel room. Boy, howdy, did we laugh about that. Dan mentioned our stopping in Athens on our way to graduate school for our son and attending the International Quilt Show um, which our son responded later on saying it knocked his socks off. The reason I'm telling you about it again is because the day that Janet let go of this life, there was a letter from her in the mailbox written on a lovely card that she had purchased from last summer's quilt show. She closed the letter by saying, Joy to you. In 2020, love and hugs, Janet. I close by saying, Janet, you were a joy in our lives. We love you and we miss you. Hi, I'm Lori Spencer from the Kennedy Museum of Art. Um, I have a note here from Sally Delgado, who 
is our education director that she wanted me to read. I first met, met Janet shortly after we moved to Athens in 1991 when I volunteered for a project with what was then the Trisolini Gallery's Southeast Native American Collection. When the Friends of the Trisolini became the Friends of the Kennedy Museum of Art, Janet did not miss a beat in the support of the museum as the new home for Ohio University's art collections. Her dedication was unwavering even during the years she lived outside of Athens, and we always knew we could count on her for her support. Some of my fondest memories are from recent years when stopping by my office and finding myself and Janet deep in conversation, resolving a multitude of issues having to do with the friends of, of the Kennedy with the membership and beyond. I don't believe there was anything she was not willing to tackle with her characteristic wisdom and humor. Janet was a force of good to be reckoned with, and we will all miss her smiling presence at the museum table. I didn't write out what I wanted to say because I just kind of wanted to tell you how I felt from my heart, and I can tell you from listening to everybody talk today from the music is exactly what Janet was to me. Janet was a lover of art. She was a lover of people. She was a lover of all things. I am the administrative assistant there, and she made me feel like I was the director. It didn't matter what was going on, what the problems were, she would come in and we would tackle everything. She's just a go-getter. She was, uh, she actually was working on removing some of the things out of her flower beds to bring up to the museum, and her and our students that work there and myself, we were gonna plant things because the university just doesn't do that anymore, and she wanted the building to look nice. Um, she volunteered for, she helped me with um, the receptions that we had, she helped with openings. Anything that I needed, Janet was there. She loved art and she loved the museum. She was a mentor to me. If I can become half the person that Janet was, just by the short time that she touched my life, I will consider myself successful. And I can see as I was thinking about what I was going to say today, all I kept thinking about was the love that she has for people, even people that are hard to love. I've learned a lot from her, and I am so thankful for her friendship. I'm so thankful to, to have been able to met her and for her to be part of my life, and she will be greatly missed at the Kennedy Museum. <laughs> wow. I have to get myself together. <clears throat> I'm the middle Philippi girl. Janet's younger sister. And I tout myself as being the one that knew her the longest that's here in this room, at least. I guess I'm the one that knew her the longest that's living. <clears throat> so I will give you a little bit of her early years and what it was like to live with Janet. <clears throat> and as I encapsulated what I could from early years, it hit me at what an unusual person she was. And this isn't, is not in my script. I'll highlight her early years, but I was astonished as I tried to put it on paper, what she was like and what it was like watching her enjoy life. And that's what the last few speakers have told us. She enjoyed life, and she drew others into enjoying life. From her earliest moments, Janet was dedicated to watching out for others and to see that things that needed done were done. She often determined what was necessary even before others thought that was necessary. Sometimes people disagreed and saw things differently than she saw them, but she followed through. I recall a story told to me about jo young Janet. <clears throat> when I was a toddler, mother went to the mailbox and told Janet to keep an eye on me. When mother came back, you can guess, she saw Janet following me around at my every move with her head on my shoulder, actually keeping an eye on me. Christy will attest 
to the fact that she finds herself in the care of Janet in most of her early pictures. <clears throat> Janet, as Ralph will attest, was a great exemplary caregiver. Throughout our years at home, Janet was as dynamic as the adult you've grown to know and love. She had a zest for living, even as a young person. Her energy was seemingly unending. I was ever amazed at the little time it took her to eradicate the weeds in the front sidewalk, to clean our room that we shared, or even clean the barn to surprise our father. Her energy extended into her education. She was an avid reader, a whiz at math. She was knowledgeable in current events and world and American history. Academically talented, she earned valedictorian upon graduation from high school and followed with continuing accolades from WVU as she graduated in undergraduate school. After obtaining her master's degree in research and textiles, she taught briefly at Ohio University. In high school, with all her academic success, she was also active in every extracurricular activity that my parents could stand. <laughs> She was a thespian, which required a lot of practice on stage. She was active in my teens. She was active in our church, where she sang the choir as a young adult. As a band member, she became first clarinet, and she participated in all the concerts and halftime shows at football games that were there for our enjoyment. She rode her bicycle a mile down the road to the football field to practice those intricate and time-consuming performances that they had for the interim of football games, halftime performances. And those halftime performances changed with every football game, unlike most of the ones in high schools today where they change once or twice a season. And I would add, she loved dancing, and she touts as one of her greatest experiences in high school, going to Pittsburgh to participate in Dick Clark's American Bandstand. Those of you from Florida will remember her dancing in a Congo line on a particular trip that our uncle took us on. Dedication to experiencing all areas possible and doing them with exuberance and to the best of her ability was a given in Janet's life. Her greatest continuing interest in those early years, however, was in 4-H. That organization brought her to an early career as a county agent after graduation from WVU. Within the realm of demonstrations and public speaking contests, Janet honed her public speaking skills to perfection. I believe too that she took every cooking and sewing class that there was to take at the time. And I've heard through comments today that those of you who experienced dinner or meals at the Izzards know what I, what I where she began her experiences. And her sewing techniques were outstanding to boot. Our family raised and showed Holsteins on our farm through 4-H. Janet raised and showed many and won showmanship honors at both Marshall County Fair and the State Dairy Show at Jackson's Mill. Those years brought her to the attention of people that felt she should run for West Virginia State Dairy Princess. It was after winning that honor and at the State Dairy Show that year as she fulfilled her duties as princess that she met her future husband, Ralph. There, her family feels was her greatest prize. 
We've admired her choices over the years, but Ralph was her finest. That couple added greatly to our lives, and Martha, their daughter, has been a family treasure. As a side note, <clears throat> many know that Janet wasn't afraid to take charge. I remember a particular 4-H meeting when Janet was president. The leaders had left us young folks on our own and would return after us after the meeting. As we waited for our parents, we noticed a bright light, a bright flickering light in the direction of our home. It was the light of a fire, no doubt. We waited and our parents did not come, so we felt someone should take the initiative and Janet stepped to the, the duty. She crossed the road to the pay phone, and there were those at the time, and she called the fire department. Masses of cars followed the fire truck from Cameron. I believe every man in Cameron came to that fire. The fire truck went up the road toward our home and the cars followed and we waited. The light continued to flicker in the sky. Soon, the car started backing down the road because there wasn't much room to turn around. They were bumper to bumper. They turned at the store that we had called from and started toward Cameron, but one driver stopped to tell Janet that a neighbor of ours was burning brush. Oops. <laughs> That's the one time that I remember Janet making an error that affected so many people. <laughs> and it was a fuel for a few chuckles over the years. We could tease her about that. As we reared our children, family gatherings with the Izzards were never without entertainment. We rode the train in Nelsonville, picnicked at the lakes in and around Athens, and at Fly, Ohio, boated on the river in Marietta, and visited museums wherever we were. We even had our own family tour guides, as many of you have mentioned, in Oklahoma for me first, Louisiana, and New York. Visits to the Trisilini Gallery, the Kennedy Museum, and the barn in Athens found us buying treasures for Christmas gifts, being treated to art shows and quilt displays at the barn. One of my most memorable times was the Native American blanket display at the Kennedy Museum. I believe Janet had contacts in Western states, probably from one of her travels, that brought those beautiful blankets to Athens. Those who knew her know of her dedication to the arts and especially to the Kennedy Museum. The Izzard's special care of our Mark and Beth extended to their adulthoods and recently even to their children. Her family got to hear also of friendships that were treasured by Janet and Ralph. We heard about the special gatherings of those friends, many of those friends, and actually enjoyed one of the breakfasts or maybe two. <clears throat> we celebrate a wonderful life, lived fully, and know that our sudden and unexpected loss of Janet was a gift for her. She would not have wanted to have been inactive, and she had made her contributions to our world, living to the fullest. She left as a shining example of how one person can bring meaning to many aspects of life for those around her. As one friend here from Athens said to me, when she came, she was a presence in the room. Her presence is missed. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Christy, Janet's youngest sister. I'd first like to say that Janet was an accomplished spokesperson. 
She could remove herself from the emotional side of an issue and speak truthfully about the issue. Please bear with me if I don't control my emotions completely, but I will be speaking truthfully. I need to lay some background so that each of you can understand my new perspective as to how Janet influenced my life and ultimately everyone that she loved. Our mother was afflicted in her late 20s, <clears throat> early 30s, with the then very debilitating disease of rheumatoid arthritis. Doctors thought that pregnancy might arrest the disease. So I arrived in 1950, nearly nine and seven years following Karen and Janet and Karen. We can only imagine the difficulties that our mother faced. She spent her early years of marriage adjusting to farm life, motherhood, rheumatoid arthritis, and then a new baby. Prior to Janet's passing, I would look at family pictures and would notice if it were primarily a picture of myself as a baby or a toddler. After Janet's passing, my perspective was different. I noticed that it was usually Janet holding me or lifting me, supporting me to watch our father in some task with Karen and usually our cousin Margaret or other cousins alongside. Upon absorbing this revelation, I asked Karen and Margaret, I said, I was spoiled, wasn't I? <laughs> Their response, of course you were. The bottom line is that next to Martha, I'm that baby that Janet probably held the most. I was spoiled, but I claim through no fault of my own. I choose to blame Janet, Karen, and my cousins. Janet once told me that she acquired a globe at an early age, and she would twirl the globe and point to destinations that she dreamed of traveling. She was blessed to do that with her husband, Ralph, her soulmate of 55 years. She absolutely loved life. As you've heard and you know, she loved people, travel, art, music, nature, reading, conversation, and so much more. Oh, that we could each embrace life with that zest. Well, we can. Through this tragic event, I have ex I've learned that the loss of a sibling is a most heart-wrenching experience. But I have also experienced a profound strengthening of faith. Janet lived her faith each and every day. She always looked for the positive. She constantly problem solved. Of course, she mourned. She mourned the loss of friends and family. But then she celebrated those loved ones with a renewed passion for living. As I view life, nature, art, music, and time. I do so with a different perspective, one of more appreciation because of Janet's influence. And I pray that each of us can do the same as a tribute to her and a blessing to our world. What wonderful memories and stories that we've heard today. So I thought about Janet. I remember the first time seeing her, and it won't surprise you, but it was at the famous, well, I call them famous, Breakfast Club. Uh, John and Jane Woodrow, Alan and Sue Boyd, and Ralph and Janet Izzard. 
Uh, and there's a Joe Burrow connection here since we've made it about Joe Burrow today as well. Um, it was at Gigi's restaurant uh, in the Plains uh, where uh, I, I met up with this group of folks. Uh, Gigi's uh, was prominent in uh, featuring Joe Burrow uh, early on in his LSU career. So um, we've got that wonderful connection. And I remember her infectious smile as, as I met that group for the first time and her uh, easy manner which welcomed me instantaneously without ever having met me before. So I am very appreciative to hear that that was uh, part of who she was. As I thought about what to say today, this passage from Isaiah came to my mind. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In the beginning of our service today, as part of the opening prayer, I read this little passage from Romans. When we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. And when we die, we are buried with Christ Jesus and with him by baptism into death. It seems a strange combination to think about baptism and death as being part of the same thing. And yet this is what the people of God heard when Jesus himself was baptized. And it hearkened back to this passage from Isaiah. The people who were there for Jesus' baptism, when God's voice comes from the heavens and the Spirit of God descends upon him, they recognized in Jesus' baptism those words from Isaiah. And the Spirit of God descends and the voice is heard and it says, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. My beloved. When God speaks from the heavens and proclaims Jesus as God's beloved Son, God says that for the benefit of all of us. That we are joined in Jesus' baptism, that we are also God's beloved. And the message that the scripture writers want us to hear is that we are deeply beloved by the God who created us. That Janet is deeply beloved. The person sitting next to you in the pew today is deeply beloved. And people you wouldn't sit next to in the pew are deeply beloved. Now being deeply beloved doesn't mean we're perfect. It means we were created in love. And that that love allows us to see the imperfections in each other as endearing traits rather than character flaws. We are beloved because God delights in loving us. Even if we are imperfect, God delights in us, not because of our successes, not because of our accomplishments, but because we are created in God's image. It is in baptism that we are joined with Christ in his baptism. It's why we baptize children. It's our way of acknowledging before God and each other that we are part of God's family right from the start. It's how we both claim visibly and symbolically that we belong to God and that we belong to each other. That's it. It's the only qualification we have for being part of God's family because God created us and because God loves us. Someone once said, we can't love the entire world until we learn to love each other in our own particularities. We don't always get to know the impact we've had on each other's lives as well. I'm sure Janet probably would have been surprised to hear some of the stories today and the impact that she's had and will continue to have in the life of those that she has touched. 
And if she were here, I would say, know this, Janet, you have made a transformative impact in my own life because of the way that you lived yours and the way that you reminded me that you too were God's beloved. When we truly inhabit that love of God for each other, then we can see the love of God in each other as well. Because if God can see us as beloved, if God can see us despite our own failures and foibles and mistakes, then there's certainly enough room for God's love for all those that we know and love. When God's voice came down from heaven that day in Jesus' baptism, whether the whole crowd heard it or not, it was like rain falling from the sky on the parched earth after a drought. And I think our task in life, and certainly Janet embodied this, is to help people be able to hear that voice, that we are loved and cherished. Taking time to meet strangers on a street in New York or taking time to be a tour guide, taking time to be with family and to share a meal. Aren't these all the ways in which Janet reminded you that you are loved, cared for, that you are part of the beloved? And so maybe our charge this day from Janet and from God is to amplify that message as we continue to live our lives. And I know it can be daunting but as one of my favorite authors, Madeline Langle, wrote, we have to be braver than we think we are because God is constantly calling us to become more than we are. Maybe that's why it's good to remember our own baptisms every once in a while, because in our own baptism, God is calling us to be more than we are. In our baptisms, we have been called to be God's people, and to offer the world a different and a much better narrative. I certainly celebrate that day with Janet. So my friends, I would charge you to go and show the light of God to the world so that others may see your life and Janet's life in you. And they too may hear that voice. You are beloved. You are beloved. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you have promised many rooms within your house. Give us faith to see beyond touch and sight this day some sure sign of your kingdom. And where our vision fails, to trust in your love, O God, which never fails. For you have called us your beloved. Lift our grief and give us good hope in Jesus Christ so that we too may bravely walk our earthly way and look forward to the glad reunion in the life to come. We lift up today your servant Janet, whose baptism is now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of her life, for all in her that was good and kind and faithful for the love that you gave to her as a daughter, a sister, a wife, a mother, a friend, a co-worker, for the grace that you gave to her, that kindled in her the love, O oh God, that you have given to each of us, and that enabled her to serve you faithfully. We thank you for, the, for Janet that death has passed, pain has ended, and that she has now entered the joy that you have prepared. In our grief and confusion, O oh God, help us to find peace in the knowledge of your loving mercy to all your children. And give us your light to guide us and to that assurance of your love. For this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Janet. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints of light. Amen.
peace will, peace will come. Let it begin with me. We, we need, we need peace. Let it begin with me. My own life is all I can hope to control. Let my life be lived for the good, the good of my soul. Let it bring peace, sweet peace. Peace will come, but let it begin with me. Let my life is all I can hold to control. And let my life be lived for the good, the good of the whole. Let it bring Sweet peace, peace will come. Let it begin with me. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God, in the love of God, Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain with all of you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>